Welcome to the next video in this series about new garden bed making techniques or recipes. If you have not seen part one, I highly recommend you go and watch that right now. I will link to that in the top corner of this video right now. It's also linked in the description below. I shared the first three recipes there. Now let's talk about recipe number four and a little bit of controversy. Some people don't like lasagna gardening. Other people are obsessed. Let's talk a little bit about the upsides and downsides and, and when lasagna gardening can be helpful. Because of course, not every single gardening method is going to be helpful in every context. These recipes are only meant to be starting points, so please take notes and decide what's best for you. Do a little bit of research because best practices are different everywhere. Every yard is different. Adapt these methods as needed. Lasagna gardening is a method of mulching and soil building or composting in place that involves multiple layers of organic materials layered up like the layers in a lasagna. The way you layer and what ingredients you add can vary depending on what you have on hand and what your goals are for the space, what your soil needs, and so on. And expanding on the whole lasagna idea, here's a typical recipe for, for making a lasagna garden bed. Sometimes the first layer is cardboard or similarly multiple layers of newspapers are again totally optional. We talked about this in the last video. You probably don't even need the cardboard in a lasagna garden bed as long as you're layering things or mulching deep enough. And if you're using the cardboard, you again have to wait for it to decompose before you can plant into this bed. Consider all of the downsides of cardboard by checking out my other video on the cardboard controversy where I go into way more detail on this. Some lasagna gardening resources recommend double digging, so deeply digging or turning your soil before installing the bed, which is not necessary. It's, it's not good for the soil. Next, many folks will add a layer of slightly twiggy or stemmy materials. And I don't know if this is really necessary, but anecdotally, the idea is that some rougher materials as the first layer can add some air pockets at the bottom and oxygen is important to decomposition. So you don't get any smells, of course, but if you, if you aren't going super deep with a lasagna garden bed, there's probably enough air anyway. But it is a nice opportunity to add some of the rougher looking materials to the bottom where they're less likely to peek through the mulch or be visible once you're done installing the bed. So it is, it is a good place to put any of the larger materials, but consider experimenting. Next, the main layers. The idea is to alternate between layers of compostable materials and ideally things that you have on site already or even things that you've stockpiled. These could be leaves, lawn clippings, prunings from your landscape plants, fruit and vegetable scraps, torn or shredded newspaper or other non-glossy papers, coffee grounds, herbicide-free straw, paper towels, or similar organic materials. It is recommended that you alternate between layers of the nitrogen-rich materials and the more carbon-rich materials. These are often called greens and browns, and I will link to a list of greens versus browns below if you want to learn more about specific materials. But this is how you build up the garden bed. You can repeat these alternating layers as few or as many times as you would like. The most important layer will be the last layer where you will finish with a few inches of ideally an organic woody mulch material. This final layer will be what prevents weeds from happily sprouting in your new beautiful garden bed. Ideally four to six inches of arborist chips. I've gotten away with three inches, sometimes a few weeds sprouting up here and there. And uh, I've also used three inches of medium fur bark nuggets. Just, just end with an organic woody mulch material. Overall, you need to make sure that your lasagna garden bed is deep enough to smother out what is below, right? We're trying to smother out a lawn or a weedy area to create a new garden bed. So perhaps four to six inches deep total if you're using cardboard or deeper, eight to 12 inches deep if not using cardboard or maybe more depending on what you're smothering. As long as your lasagna garden bed is deep enough and you again finish with the this last layer of mulch and organic woody mulch material, this compost in place method can be really effective at smothering out weeds or lawns underneath. One thing that is particularly cool about this method is that if you don't use the cardboard or the multiple layers of newspaper and you make the bed deep enough, you can plant into this bed on the same day. But just keep in mind that it's going to settle a little bit. So if you have a two foot deep lasagna garden bed and then you plant a shrub that's going to exist there for many years, this lasagna garden bed is going to settle and it could affect the planting depth of that, of that shrub a little bit. Some things are going to shift. Keep that in mind. But I have planted flower gardens and annual vegetable gardens into 12 inch deep lasagna garden beds on the same day that they were built right over an existing lawn. I do add just a tiny bit of soil around the plants when I put them in the ground just to kind of help them transition. I know some people do add a layer of soil or sometimes compost on top to plant seeds into. You, you may only need a little bit, but the plant roots will be perfectly content to grow through these organic materials as, they, as they're decomposing and again they are going to settle a bit. But the plants in my lasagna gardens have absolutely thrived. Now I want to pause and point out, I, I know that this sounds like a lot of work, but here's the good news. 
by now you have an understanding of the method and you can customize it depending on what you're doing and what you have on hand. And the customizing is the most important part. You also don't have to do a large area all at once, though you can. You can use different ingredients depending on what you're growing too. So you can use as many or as few layers as you would like, as long as you're going deep enough to smother whatever you're smothering and reflect back on recipes one and two for just a general idea of the minimum depths needed. But overall, you don't need to use this lasagna gardening method if you have really nutritious soil with enough organic matter and if you have enough arborist chips then you could just use recipe number one, essentially. A common argument against lasagna gardening, getting into a little bit more of this controversy, is first, the use of cardboard or multiple layers of newspaper. And again, that's kind of its own controversy if you, if you just look at that on its own. Uh, but the other common argument is that you may be adding more nutrients to your soil than you actually need. Uh, of course, you, you might just not need these extra nutrients, so why go to the extra trouble of building a lasagna garden bed when you could just use, again, use recipe one. Also, there's the idea of if you add too many nutrients to your soil, then there's this potential runoff. But short of adding a lot of manure or bringing in a lot of commercial compost, which can sometimes include compost and manure in it as well, or perhaps using unneeded fertilizers or improperly using fertilizers, which it's kind of its own thing because we're not, we're not adding fertilizer to the lasagna garden. But short, short of bringing in a lot of manure or composted manure, commercial compost, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to create any serious nutrient runoff problems by lasagna gardening. Of course, there is a such thing as too much of anything, so get a soil test done. That's a great place to start. See what you need, if you need anything at all. Maybe you just need to smother out your lawn or a weedy area with, with some arborist chip mulch. But if you need to improve your soil a little bit, you need to add some organic matter, add some nutrients, or uh, if you are growing something that needs a lot of nutrients, this is a great way to create your own soil fertility on site using things that you already have on hand, ideally. Or you can collect some things from neighbors or friends. But if you plan on growing pumpkins that will need a lot of nitrogen, then maybe you can add a layer of compost and manure to the pumpkin bed, to this lasagna garden, and then you can plant your pumpkins right into this bed right away. I think the lasagna gardening controversy isn't so much with the method itself as it is with certain components of the method, like uh, double digging. That's just not a good practice that's sometimes recommended in lasagna gardening, like in standard recipes. But the problem, that's, that's the problem there, right? The fact that we have these very standardized recipes or methods that are promoted as one size fits all. And if everyone goes around saying, next, you add three inches of composted manure to your lasagna garden bed and you're growing native plants that aren't even used to that, that extra nitrogen, it's just may not be necessary. It may leach away. This just makes sense. There's never going to be one recipe that works for everyone in every setting. Every gardening method needs to be customized for different regions, different materials, uh, you, you know, different contexts. And you need to learn a little bit more what's best for your region and do a little experimenting maybe too. But I do think it's a shame if we consider all lasagna gardening is bad just because there's some people out there promoting very rigid, specific methods for doing it. They, as you can see, these methods are really complex. They're, they're really awesome and they have some wonderful applications in the right context. The reason I like to teach this method is that there are many times when it's helpful. If this method is an easy way for you to make a garden bed where a garden bed didn't exist before, that's wonderful. And consider the fact that you're using materials that are accessible that you probably have on hand already that may even be considered some form of waste even better. If you are looking out at your yard, maybe you have a pretty large space you're working with and you're wondering, how do I break this down? Where do I even start? Best place to start is by creating a landscape design plan, having some sort of plan that makes it easier because from there you can prioritize or break the space down into, into different sections or areas where you can smother out the lawn or create a new garden bed first, second, and so on. For example, you could start lasagna gardening or sheet mulching right where you want your privacy trees or your larger trees to go first. Maybe in the fall you start a bed and then from there you can expand out and do other areas where you want garden beds, then do another area, then connect the two areas, and so on. In my opinion, these, these methods are easier, they're less work, they have fewer downsides than many of the other common lawn removal or soil prep methods that, that, that you're going to be choosing from. If you spray or you otherwise kill the lawn, the sod is still going to be there. You still have to either smother it so you can you know, decompose it away, or you have to remove it. And to remove it, you can, you can cut it away, you can dig it away, you can till it. There's a lot of physical labor, there's a lot of work in, in these methods as well. Sometimes you need certain equipment. Sometimes you have things to uh, dispose of, but using these methods, the, the sod, the lawn, the weeds, these things are going to decompose in place. You're not disturbing your soil structure. You're not having to remove anything. In my opinion, they're just, this, this method's a lot less work compared to some of these other methods. 
And pro tip, if you want a really nice neat edge where you know you transition from lawn, you have this really nice neatly edged lawn and then it starts a uh, garden bed. Let's let's say you're installing a garden bed that's like an island in the center of a pretty big lawn area. You could dig out about a shovel width or maybe a little bit more of the lawn just in the area that's going to outline the bed. Outline the bed by doing this. Then you can move this side, just kind of toss it into the center of the bed. You don't have to dispose of it because you'll be burying it in whatever other method that, that you're going to be using. But then you can build up your bed and then taper it down to this area and just make sure that any exposed soil is, is covered with mulch so that weeds don't you know, fill in or grow into any of this exposed soil. But this can be a great way to taper down to the edge of the lawn so you, you don't have this kind of messy overlap area. You have a very neatly edged lawn, then your garden bed starts. And maybe if you're working in a front yard in a neighborhood where people are going to get concerned about how things look, you could stockpile materials in the backyard and then go out and get a bed done all at once or just use a method that focuses on only using arborist chips. Even so, some people don't like the look of that so much. I do know some people who use a lot of arborist chips and then will top with a little bit of a prettier looking, you know, bark mulch or something like that. Again, there's pros and cons to every mulch material. <laughs> and I, I keep mentioning my playlist about mulch, but there's, there's a lot to this. I don't want to recommend everything without you having the resources. You need to consider all your options. So if you want, check out those videos. I'll link to that playlist below. And if you want to use this method, you're improving some poor soil. You don't think you're going to have enough materials to use a lasagna garden method. Uh, I know uh, regarding stockpiling, people will go out and ask their neighbors for their leaves, their grass clippings, and then they'll stock, stockpile materials, you know, along the side of their garage until they're ready to build the bed. I know some people who also go out and collect waste materials from other people, other places. I've done this myself. For example, if you go to coffee shops, you ask for their leftover coffee grounds uh, for your garden, you'll more than likely go home with plenty. And here in the Pacific Northwest, there are like 10 coffee shops every three feet. So this takes about 30 seconds. Don't take this too far. It is possible to add too many coffee grounds <laughs> to your yard. Do everything in balance, of course. I've also asked neighbors for their uh, piles of leaves or their bags of leaves. And pro tip, ask them after they've raked them up because I know I'm a terrible lazy person, but they were they were probably planning on <laughs> raking them up anyway. You just wait till that's done, then ask for the leaves so you can go collect them and use them in your yard. And if you have a compost pile in your backyard or a compost bin, something like that, you could use some of what you have in that bin in whatever lasagna garden bed you're building at the time. Lasagna gardening is a very flexible method. Use whatever materials you can find or what you have on hand at the time. It can be kind of fun actually to, to collect materials, see what you have access to, see what you can find easily, start stockpiling things. It'll build up quicker than you're expecting. You could also, especially in your backyard, have an ongoing section, an ongoing area in your yard where you have a lasagna garden bed that you constantly add things to. So when you mow your grass, you don't have to stockpile it. Just put it right on this lasagna garden bed area. Let the grass be there on, the, the grass clippings be there on top. Then when you have uh, some leaves in the fall, add, add some of that to it. Bury your compost scraps, your, your kitchen scraps in there. So you could add additional layers as you find them instead of having an area where you stockpile materials. It's also important to know that soil life brings organic matter and nutrients down into the soil even if you're just putting things on the soil surface like this. This is like what happens in a forest. Organic matter builds up on the soil surface over time, right? And then all of these creatures, all the soil life will bring these nutrients down. This means that even if you have a uh, compacted soil or you have some sort of poor soil structure, extremely sandy, extremely clay soil, even by just, uh, you know, sheet mulching or lasagna gardening or doing mulching in general, anything that you put on the soil surface like this can improve your soil structure. If you have really sandy, really clay soil, you may want to do a bit of incorporating of perhaps compost to speed up the process, though definitely reach out to a local gardening research resource like a Master Gardener Helpline, for example, just to find out the best practices specific to your region and to your soil type. I hope that this video series is inspiring you to create a new garden bed that didn't exist before. Also, I hate it when a YouTuber creates a series of videos and then it's impossible to find, you know, part one, part three, if you want to navigate through this list. There's a link in the description below to the whole playlist in order. So as more videos come out in this little series, they'll all be shared there. The list of greens versus browns, uh, nitrogen rich versus carbon rich compostable materials for your compost pile, your compost bin, or for your lasagna garden bed, that list will be in the description below as well as some, some additional resources. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.